This is little Joey Pulitzer. He's a journalist journalist, straight out of the golden era of news, say somewhere around the turn of the 20th century. He knows that to write a good story, you have to get the facts straight. If you were to ask him, and you should, he would tell you all about the five W's and one H, and how they help you organize the content for your story. Every good story contains the five W's and one H, Joey reminds us. Of course, we're talking about who, what, where, when, why, and how. Who is this story about, anyway? Joey asks himself. What happens in this story? Where does it take place? When did it occur? Why did it occur? And how did it all go down? Though he probably didn't use the phrase, how did it all go down, being that he's from the early 1900s and all. He's probably more of a, how did this all transpire sort of fellow. But anyway, good journalist that he is, he also knows that if you want to sell the story, you've got to get there first. Stake your claim, plant your flag, and the readers will pour in. That's why he's brought this newfangled time machine. Nothing's gonna stop little Joey from being first on the scene. Off he goes to the distant land known as Convergence. However, upon arriving, he notices something strange. It seems someone has scooped him. And not just one someone, but a lot of someones. A lot, a lot of someones. And it turns out that in Convergence Land, everybody's a journalist, making it almost impossible for poor Joey to stake his claim to the story. But, being a good student of communications, Joey is ready to adapt. He knows that if he's going to plant a flag on this story, his flag had better be the biggest, shiniest, most appealing flag of them all. Give the people what they want. Desirable content presented in a way that makes it irresistible. N now hold up. There's an irony here that's certainly not lost on little Joey Pulitzer. You'll remember, the press worked very hard to escape the oppressive boot of King George and his band of merry colonizing men. Our First Amendment ensures that we could give the people what they need, without fear of retribution by the government. The press has free reign to broadcast the truth to everyone. However, that whole many-to-many -many divergence of authority thing we stumbled into here in Convergence Land means that the media no longer has a monopoly on the truth. There's competition out there. And if people don't like what they hear from us, They've got infinite other options. 13 channels becomes 1300 channels, which becomes DVR and On Demand, which becomes Netflix and YouTube. FM radio becomes satellite and, and XM becomes iTunes and Pandora. So instead, we see a trend towards broadcasting becoming replaced with narrow casting, targeting each listener's stubborn need for user-definable personal preference. At any moment, the listener can tune us out. That forces us to cater not just to what they need, but what they want instead. And so, we've escaped the tyranny of George's boot, only to be shackled once more to the tyranny of personal preference. Our little anachronistic hero, Joey Pulitzer, would later take all this to heart and go on to create a legacy of over-sensationalized yellow journalism. But not you. You simply need to strike the balance of giving the audience what they need, but presenting it in a way that makes them think they want it, too. Never one to fall prey to the guile of clickbait. Maybe, just maybe, you cleverly surmise, there might be some stuff already in this story of ours that we can emphasize to help connect directly with our audience's interests. Lucky for you, the time machine that brought you here to Convergence Land 
talk to you right here just after Vincent Fillek had published his book Dynamics of Media Writing, which outlines these five interest elements to pay attention to. Of course, we're talking about foci, fame, oddity, conflict, immediacy, and impact. Fame. Does the who in our story have enough name recognition to sell a pape? That's Pulitzer talk for paper. I mean, hey, yellow journalism aside, let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater, right? Oddity. Can we catch people's attention by playing up how odd the details of the story are? Conflict. Is there a clash of the titans? A conflict for the ages? A car crash readers won't be able to help but rubberneck at? Immediacy. Just how breaking is our breaking news? Does this story have extra urgency? Does it hit really close to home, temporally or geographically? Impact. What is the impact of this story on the reader? Surely they won't pass up a story that will directly impact their life. Well, it looks like we've sure got our work cut out for us. I guess we'd better start by getting to know our audience now, shouldn't we? Alright, you go on ahead to the next part of this week's content while I stay here and figure out how to pay for a parking ticket on a time machine. Ugh, that's gonna be a hefty one. Hmm, maybe I can play up the whole impact interest element thing and get the judge to go easy on me. Yeah.